It's your girl Ash and I am back back with another video and today I'm going to be finishing up a day remembering Dale Earnhardt. We left off with um, Dale coming up with this strategy of it being um, him, his son, and his friend working together as a team and that's what they did and Walt, Michael Waltrip ended up winning. Dale was in an accident and no one knows at this point in time, you know, the the state that Dell is in, um, especially um, Michael. He doesn't know. He doesn't know anything at all. And um, I think we left off with Dell being transported to an actual hospital because the urgent center that they had him at um, really couldn't do much for him and it was best for him to be transferred over to an actual hospital enough of me talking let's get into this reaction come on baby come on as michael waltrip drove to the winner's circle to celebrate victory in the 2001 daytona 500 he happy he don't even know what happened known at the seminal moment of his career would be forever shrouded in tragedy What's this guy name right here? Cause he was the one that seen what Dell looked like inside the car. He's so excited. His friend believed in him. Dell believed in him. It was amazing. People that didn't know me a month before, now we're all standing in victory lane celebrating winning the greatest race in the world. Everything was just so cool. And it remained that way for probably 20, 30 minutes. We kept watching on the camera and this looked bad. And, and you can tell by the people around the, the, the car, even though it was in a long shot. Then the ambulance came up and then Dale was taken out and placed in the ambulance. And then we followed, watched the ambulance going to the hospital. And the ambulance was traveling virtually at walking pace, which meant either a broken back or death. Okay, another subject. Michael Walter finally gets his first win after all these tries. Any reaction? Um, very happy for him. I just wish he could enjoy it a little more because his boss was not there to help him. Okay, we just got work done. While Earnhardt's driver, Michael Waltrip, celebrates, Dale Earnhardt rides the back of an ambulance to the Halifax Medical Center. The last thing you want oh, to do is to overstate the... the drama of the situation. I thought he and went yet, to the center first. You don't want to understate the possibility that, that things could go really bad. I was in Victory Lane, and everybody, obviously, it was a lot of celebration, a lot of happy people, and everybody seems to be just overly elated, and Michael's got the trophies, and Michael's being Michael. What was begin beginning to be more and more odd is no Earnhardt was there. And I remember thinking, where's Dale? I mean, how come he's not here yet? And Dale Jr., how come he's not here? I, I, I'm sure they're coming, right? John Graham, who is the uh, president of the racetrack, came over and he said, hey, who's going to accept the owner's trophy? And I said, well, Dale will be here any minute. Just Dale or Therese or one of these, somebody will take the trophy. And he says, no, nah, Dale, Dale's, they're taking Dale over to the hospital. So for the owner's trophy, John basically did the victory lane interview with me, and then he had me stand in the pictures. As soon as we got done with that first photo, I looked over and Ken Schrader walked into victory lane. Mikey, he just won Daytona 500. What a big deal. Yeah. That was such an important uh, moment for him. I love Mikey like a brother, and I wanted to tell him what I thought the deal was. He made fun of me all the time, you know, about, about not winning. And uh, finally, there's somebody I know coming to say congratulations. I saw him, and I said, can you believe it, Schrader? I won the Daytona 500. And... Uh, he just grabbed me and said, it's not good. And I was like, well, it's not really that bad that I won the Daytona 500, <laughs> is it? I just told Mikey that, uh, you know, that I was awful happy for him and stuff. But, no, listen, Mike, we got a, we got, we got a big problem here. 
extremely worried about Dale. I remember him looking at me, you know, and it's just like, like it didn't register because, you know, yeah. he waiting for Dale to come in. And so that pretty much told me that, um, you know, the celebration was over. You know, what I thought was the greatest day ever see, that was heading in a direction that would make it the, the worst day ever. By then, I'm, I don't know what to do. I'm wanting to go to Victory Circle, but I don't know if I should. And we're on a quick off. Uh, the, the race went long because of the red flag, and we were at the top of the hour, and so we couldn't stay and give a, a report about it. Nobody knew anything. They were Everybody was real hush-hush yeah. about it. And nobody was telling us anything, so we had to go off the air. Well, thanks, John. We all knew Michael Waltrip had a fast car here in Speed Weeks. I tried to get they look so worried. both Larry and Darrell to concentrate on the win, on victory lane, on analyzing the race and what had happened, while I tried to piece together all the information we had so that that's how you know that uh, Dale Earnhardt was just so special because everybody is just, everybody's energy is off. You can see it. Everybody's energy, everybody, everybody's mood has shifted and everybody's concerned about him. And that is just, that's so amazing. We didn't say the wrong thing, but we also didn't go away leaving people to think that everything was all right. We're jubilant for the Waltrips, and our prayers are with the Earnhardt family. John? Well, I was going to go to Victory Circle, but my friend Whoa. Andy uh, Kespacito, he's a deputy sheriff, he was going to take me down through the crowd to get to Victory Circle. So when I, when I take off the headset and I turn around, he's standing at the top of the stairs shaking his head. And... Uh, Big Andy's wife works, she worked at the Halifax Hospital in the emergency room. She had called him and told him to get DW and get down here. And we uh, stopped it One so road I, led to Victory Lane. The other carried a life in the balance. The sport's biggest day had become a cacophony of celebration and sorrow. I couldn't, I, I didn't know what to do. I don't even, I, you know, even to this day, I don't know why I went to the hospital. I really don't. Uh, family, NASCAR, you know, all the, everybody that, that needed to be there was there. We're just in the emergency room. We're, we're inside, and it's not a waiting room outside. We are, like, inside. We're not in front of Dale. They got Dale screened off and everything, so... Um, but we just know it's not pretty. I can't remember everyone that was in the room, but whoever came in, I think it was a doctor, came in and said we lost Dale. I have his son standing next to me. There's nobody in this room. So. I take care of him. And we just all sit there. And uh, not knowing what to expect next. And. Uh, I remember some of us just had our heads down and uh, it's just it was a bad day. I go into the room where all the team members are at. And I remember just looking at all of their faces and just this junk. So, so that's kind of where we all were. Ooh. He died. I believe I thought 
talking about love. Michael when I left the hospital. I thought, oh my gosh, wonder where, wonder what he's, wonder if he knows, wonder what he's, you know, wonder what he's doing. Buffy was dealing with it all. You know, Buffy was um, talking to NASCAR and talking to um, the family, and so she was she was doing a job, an admirable job of <laughs> making sure none of that got to me. Then we got in the van together, and it was the first time I'd been alone with her, and she said, it's Dale's dead. I started wondering how I was supposed to feel at that moment, and I haven't stopped wondering since. That's something. On NASCAR officials, who I knew knew what the deal was, I asked them when people were starting to leave and stuff, and I said, hey, is it official? Well, when you got an official word, and I, <laughs> I never cuss anybody, but I said, listen, you blankly blank, tell me what the deal is. I was just down there, and so then they told me. Even before the announcement, I believe that it started to filter through that it was a, it was a possibility. At that point, I remember Mike Helton coming into the media center and standing up there at that podium and saying those words that have now, that are now etched in our brains forever. Ooh. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, We've lost Dale Earnhardt. Those were, those words were impossible. I remember walking out in the garage and crew guys and people that had been in the sport forever hugging and sobbing. It was the most surreal scene because people were basically walking around in a daze. Like, how could this happen? It couldn't happen to him. You know, it had to be close to two hours after the race when we finally made it to the, to the motorhome. And, and uh, I think I asked him, I said, you want me to come over? You want to come over here? And he said, no, I just want to be alone. Because that was hard for him. Because Dale had, you know, done that win meant so much, and to have it, to, and to not, to not be able to share that with Dale, who gave him the chance, okay. and to first win of his career, Daytona, and oh, he sitting in his know. motor home crying. And uh, Michael said, this is, this is supposed to be my, the greatest day of my life, and it's my worst. And all I could say through being choked up, and all I said is, Dale knew. Dale he knew did. you won that race. That's all you can say. He did. So. All night, Sunday night, you know, I never slept, you know, trying to figure out how this could happen, why it happened. What was next? Uh, you know, we lost what I would call our franchise of RCR. I lost a very, very close friend that hurt worse than anything. And uh, lost my hunting buddy. Earlier this evening, the death of NASCAR legend and giant Dale Earnhardt. At 49, he has died as a result of injury sustained in a crash on the last lap of the Daytona 500 at the Daytona International Speedway. I remember pulling into DEI after we got Dale home and just seeing the hundreds and hundreds of 
people that were there and the candles and the we miss you's and all of their tributes. I remember looking at me and saying, if it ever happens to me, you better get a race. We ask all the employees, if you want to go home and be with your families, go. And I can't recall one person leaving. Their way of overcoming it was to start worrying about Rockingham. I'd like to ask you to do something. I'd like to ask you to take the hand by the person beside you. Lord, our, our hearts are hurting. We've lost a great friend. And it all seems so unfair. People ask us, how can we go out and race today? We can do that, first of all, because we know that's what Dale would want us to do. And second of all, because, Lord, we know without a doubt that he is dwelling in your house and will forevermore. Amen. One week after a sport's darkest hour, DEI driver Steve Park rose to the moment. Here they're going to come to the line. It's going to be a photo finish. Park has the run off the high side. He clears the body. And Steve Park scores the second straight win for Earnhardt Incorporated. Boy, that team. Yeah. I brought tears in my eyes. Told me how to drive this place. And he told me to stay off the brakes, and we stayed off the brakes and won the race. Two weeks later, Richard Childress, rookie Kevin Harvick, Dale's crew, and a renumbered three car delivered their eulogy. Gordon's going to make the big move on the inside when they get down here to turn three. Here he comes. He's going to drive it to the bottom. Oh, Harvick's leaving a lot of bottom on oh, Just like a year ago, he's going to get him, though. Here they come. Get him. Gordon got loose. It's Harvick. When NASCAR returned to Daytona, a son carried a message to his father, and perhaps a father carried his son. Here they come, turn four. was so happy I could push him home, made the night complete, made it perfect. And then to be able to stand on the car and, and listen to over 100,000 people screaming, it was amazing. I, I remember thinking, I'm better now. It's all, it'll, it'll be fine now. You know, we. this is redemption. If you watch how each one of those wins were, it was almost, uh, like it was meant to be. That was healing for us all. And uh, know how proud Dale would have been of every one of us. He proud. He is proud. He is proud. Oh my gosh. Woo. Jesus. This was so emotional to, um, to watch. I know Michael has his days you know it's like how could how could i celebrate and be happy when at the same time i lost my friend the, the only person that really believed in me when i didn't believe in myself you know but then they came back with a vengeance and you know i know dale is proud and i know dale is happy like dale is like their angel um right now this is just a sad story. And I honestly feel like they should retire his number. They really should. They should retire his number on the day, you know, of the of the win of um Michael Waltrip and um the day of his passing, you know? That's that's what I think. But Dell had a goal and he know that he wanted someone from his team to win and 
one did one one driver did win for sure one driver definitely did win this is this is I don't, I don't even know what to say I'm just I'm just so sad I'm just sad that you know that this happened to him it's like he you know died doing what he loves to do I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing because death isn't easy in general death isn't easy I'm just like I don't know what to say guys I really don't this is just too much you know too much to bear Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I definitely think that they should retire his number. Um, tell me how you guys feel about that. Um, and give your girl a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, fam.